Hello everyone again, it's Mike Farm, just giving you another update on my Wildlife and Mars short film. Um, I'm starting to build up the uh, the, the foam process now, uh, and I'm using a product called Plastisote, which is basically a, a high-density plastic um, sheet uh, that you can use for padding out your puppets. Some people tend to use um, balsa wood because it's quite light and relatively cheap, but in my case, what I prefer to use is a product that I've been using since about 2005, and it's uh, it's quite good. It's quite rigid and really sturdy. You can glue it together with uh, hot glue if you wish, or you can use um, two-part epoxies. But just a little bit of a breakdown for the product itself. Um, you can get them in different types of um, thicknesses of uh, sheets and such. This particular one, I think, was referred to as a H110, I think it was. The company that sold it to me originally is now no longer with us, um, but they have transferred all the rest of us over to Scotland. So I'm hoping that the, the new company up in Scotland will be able to get hold of this if I need to get any more again. Uh, this sheet was actually somewhere around the size of a sheet of A1 or A0 paper. So it was quite sizable and, and like I said, it lasts me till 2000 from 2005 and this is all that remains at the moment so uh, so yeah it's pretty good stuff um just to give you an idea of how thick you can actually get away with it so this end is roughly about five uh, not five mil ten mil sorry uh, ten mil thick and i can just about get a bit of a bend into it by putting a fair amount of pressure onto it uh, as it decreases in size as you can see it gets quite flimsy um, so it's not advisable if you're going to use a product like this to, to go that thin, but you know, a 10 mil thickness is, uh, is more than enough, I think. So yeah, just to, um, explain what I'll be doing. So the idea of, uh, putting these parts into the key areas like the torso and the hips, it basically now allows me to, as an animator to, uh, move, grip the part and move it ever so slightly so that it allows me to uh, give it proper purchase. Uh, what it also does is bulk out areas where, for example, if you are trying to animate the leg and you need to get a, a, um, a grip on the uh, thigh bone, for example, then if you've got material that's covering all this area here, you don't want to be pr compressing that area just to get to this part here. So what you would have is something like this particular product that would be in this section here, um, and you can press it into here. So you're not compressing the area as much and you won't get air, um, issues like boiling and such uh, during animation. So this is the Alicera top. So he's pretty much all finished now um, in terms of the armature at least anyway. His jaw can open and close. He's going to have eyes and eyelids uh, with a uh, flexible brow. So that's going to be uh, added on later on. I just need to make some small alterations to the feet because I've noticed when I've been doing some test motions the the leg just isn't that long as what it should be so i'm going to be adding an additional plate under here just to give it a bit more of a rise at the back and also allows the uh, the gait of the walk to be a bit more accurate so that will be the allosaurus and then same process for the xenorex as well he's now got his uh plus silk core uh, torso and uh, hip joint he's got a little bit on the uh, neck as well so it just gives me a greater purchase for the um uh, for the head because the in theory the skull of the head should actually finish here and not here but in, just to save me on um, resin material uh, I only did it so far in uh, but as you can see as I mentioned before about the bones this is basically what I need to be doing so it'll be a tiny little uh, piece that's just going to go around the ankle just to fill out that area and then I can animate it with a better purchase so that's pretty much where I'm at at the moment uh, there's still a fair bit to go. I still need to do the upholstery foam I still need to do the, um, the skin patch um, mold and get the patches for the build up um, for the latex skin after on. Um, the set's nearly finished. I just need to do some set decoration. I've had two friends help me out with that lately and that's been absolutely fantastic. Um, the other thing that has happened recently for me is that, um, oh, what was it now? It was the, uh, the there's been a bit of a design change in terms of the, uh, the layout of the set. What I've basically discovered is, um, just use these as example. So if this is your table surface, I'm going to have a set of trees here and a set of trees here. And then either side, you're going to have uh, cliff faces. Now, unfortunately, what's going to end up happening is that the cliff face on this side needs to be removed for animation of the characters that are going to be in this gap here. But the problem is, though, is that this gap here is going to have a set of trees. So rather than going through the trees to animate, which is what I used to do in my 2004 version of the film, what I'm going to be able to do is if I have the trees on a separate piece, I can actually remove that set 
replace it and take the shot and then remove it and replace it again take the shot and so forth so well, i've just saw some wood that's going to be ideal for that uh, and that'll be collected this weekend um and yeah that's pretty much it really so um just to try and help out with costs because obviously doing stop motion isn't cheap at all and there's only so much that my magnet cells and etsy are bringing in um so if you feel like you can um you can donate i think the minimum no the minimum is five pound i've double checked this now the minimum donation you can do you give is five pounds but if you go to gofundme.com mike tham ma degree um profile you'll be able to set the campaign on there you don't have to donate uh, if you can't, just sharing the campaign in itself is more than enough. But the the five pounds really does help. It's not cheap for me to get into university. It's about seventy pounds a month for me to travel in, um, and of course my tuition fees that I I still need to pay. I've got till basically the end of October to pay this. So any kind of like funding that you can give on that front as well would be fantastic. Um, I only ask people for a minimum of five pounds. I don't ask for anything more. Um, but if you want to donate a bit more, then that's fine recently and i've had an enormous donation of a hundred pounds from somebody which i'm really grateful for um so that will get me through this month's um uh, uh bus fare um and yeah that, that's pretty much it um oh and if you want to and you're new to the, uh, you've seen me on the channel but you've not following me on social media you can find me on twitter at mike tham and instagram also mike tham um so yeah that's pretty much it for the moment so hopefully but next time you see these these will be covered in foam um oh someone was asking as well why i only have um the small arms here uh basically to answer your question on that one um the idea between um the martian physiology and earth physiology is that the creatures on mars have four limbs so although the ceratopsian has uh only four limbs anyway the argument is in my uh, mythos behind the, the creatures of mars is that some animals lost their um some, uh, their front arms and some kept them in the case with the xenorex it is sort of in the process of actually losing them um so it's lost its sight so it's developed the extrasensory abilities with the hearing and the um, ultrasound but the uh, the small arms are also a design uh, choice in the when you ask a child to point to a dinosaur they immediately pick a t-rex because the the small arms are the giveaway um, and in my case i want that small arm uh, association to be recognized that this is a predator and one of the the bigger scarier types as well but i also include the larger arms not only just to give a bit more performance in the uh, in the pers uh, persuasion of the the creature as well but also that it still sticks to that martian uh, law in um in literature that the uh, all these creatures seem to have like four arms um and that's pretty much it really so it's a it's a th one that throws people off because a lot of people tend to think it's like a breathing apparatus um in stop motion you would use uh, multiple ways of breathing and one of them the more recent versions is that you use a paddle that you move up and down but in this case no these are uh, deliberate arms that are going to be uh, animated for some slightly small quips and um just a bit of a, a personal uh, account on these as well when i showed ray harryhouse in the original wire puppet uh, he actually didn't like the small arms he thought they were an unnecessary um, addition to making this uh, creature um, more complicated for animating but <laughs> if there's one thing that i took away from his advice is that uh, it doesn't matter how complicated you make the puppet as long as there's a reason behind the design and that's my reason for the design so i don't think it's that bad anyway thank you very much guys and i shall hopefully see you in the next video